When assessing finds from ancient Earth inhabitants, experts use a series of valuations to class the quality of their find. Mostly though, even the most dramatic archaeological finds are not classed very high because of the low quality preservation. So when researchers uncovered what was described at the time as the greatest archaeological discovery of all time, it's not surprising that it raised a few eyebrows when the greatest discovery was revealed to the public. But that's exactly what the site of Sutton Hoo is, the most well-preserved archaeological discovery ever uncovered regarding the history of man. Wait till you hear this. It's fair to say that the incredibly well-preserved artifacts found at this site were a bit of a shock back in 1939. At the time, the sheer wonder of the discovery reverberated across the planet, but quickly fell out of public interest as war broke out across Europe shortly after it was uncovered. Rendlesham is a strange little place, also home to the UK's answer to the Roswell incident. This secluded little town has shot well above its weight over the years and has remained a place of strange activity for many generations now. In the 1980s, American servicemen witnessed strange craft in the forest and they reported seeing hieroglyphic etched onto the bodywork. Some alternative thinkers the world over have pointed out that a binary code that was written down by one of the witnesses shortly after the incident gives the coordinates for sites of strange activity across the world, including the locations of High Brazil and the highly anomalous Great Pyramid, with a message for planetary advance also being spelled out within the binary. The strangeness does make for interesting theoretical thinking regarding what might be going on at Rendlesham, including the idea that this was once the seat of an alien king. In 2008, Rendlesham landowner notified authorities that Nighthawks, metal detectorists who raid archaeological sites in darkness, searching out illicit treasure, had been scouring his fields. The complaint allowed renewed attention brought by the looters for the Suffolk County Council Archaeological Service, working with the landowner and volunteer metal detectorists to conduct a survey to evaluate the damage and reassess the site's archaeological potential. The artifacts uncovered at Sutton Hoo are simply sensational. Not only do these things capture the vividness of this time so dramatically, that it actually questions our understanding of how we acknowledge the goings-on happening at this time. King Redwald, son of Titila, was king of the East Anglos from 600 until his death in 624. From 616, he became the most powerful of all the English rulers south of the River Humber, and by military action, installed a Northumbrian ruler acquiescent to his authority. He was the first East Anglian ruler to receive Christian teaching and baptism from the Canterbury Mission, and he helped to ensure its survival during the apostasies of Essex and Kent. He is the most favored identification for the famous Sutton Ho ship burial, according to Genealogy Online. The helmet discovered at Sutton Ho was just one of just four complete helmets to survive from Anglo-Saxon England. It has been painstakingly reconstructed from the shattered condition in which it was found. The Sutton Hoo helmets, exceptional survival and haunting appearance have made it an icon of the early medieval period. The helmet consists of an iron cap with a crest, neck guard, cheek pieces, and face mask. It was originally covered with tinned copper alloy panels and decorated with animal and warrior motifs. The scarcity of surviving Anglo-Saxon helmets indicates that only those of great status could possess them. Viewed together, the helmet's mouth, nose, and eyebrows form the image of a flying beast. Similar helmets are known from Eastern Sweden, implying shared cultural traditions and interactions with East Anglia and possibly immortalized in the Beowulf epic. It is one of the most important works of Old English literature, the date of composition is a matter of contention among scholars. The only certain dating pertains to the manuscript, which was produced between 975 and 1025. The author was an anonymous Anglo-Saxon poet referred to by scholars as the Beowulf poet. The story is set in Scandinavia. Beowulf, a hero of the Geats, comes to the aid of Hrothgar, the king of the Danes 
whose mead hall in Harat has been under attack by a monster known as Grendel. After Beowulf slays him, Grendel's mother attacks the hall and is then also defeated. Victorious, Beowulf goes home to Geatland, Gotland in modern Sweden, and later becomes king of the Geats. After a period of 50 years has passed, Beowulf defeats a dragon but is mortally wounded in the battle. After his death, his attendants cremate his body and erect a tower on a headland in his memory. The events in the poem take place over most of the 6th century, after the Anglo-Saxons had started migrating to England and before the beginning of the 7th century, a time when the Anglo-Saxons were either newly arrived or were still in close contact with their Germanic kingsmen in northern Germany and southern Scandinavia. The stories in the poem may have been brought to England by people of Geatish origins. Some suggest that Beowulf was first composed in the 7th century at Rendlesham in East Anglia, as the Sutton Who Ship Burial shows close connections with Scandinavia, and the East Anglia royal dynasty, the Wolfingas, may have been descendants of the Geatish Wolfings. When Basil Brown first began uncovering the incredible remains at these mounds, he had no idea what fate had in store for him. The self-taught archaeologists assumed that any artifacts that had once lain in the mounds would have been looted many years before his first dig in the summer of 1938. Then in 1939, Brown resumed the dig and turned his attention to the largest burrow known as Tumulus One. During the excavation, he came across a section of hard earth stained with rust and containing nails at regular intervals. Progressing with painstaking care, Brown realized that he had found the imprint of a ship more than 80 feet in length. Although the wood had long since decayed, its ghostly outline and rich cargo of grave goods remained intact. How had it stayed undisturbed for so long? Luck, as it turns out, was on their side, and they later found evidence that grave robbers had indeed probed the site in the past. Fortunately, the thieves dug in the wrong place, narrowly missing the treasure. The collection of 263 objects included weapons, silver cutlery, gold buckles, coins, and a distinctive full-faced helmet of a kind never before recovered in Britain. Examining the artifacts, they concluded that the settlement was not Viking as first assumed, but Anglo-Saxon. The significance of Sutton Hoo was instantly recognized, the largest Anglo-Saxon ship burial ever discovered, containing artifacts of a quality and quantity never seen before. Labeled the greatest archaeological discovery ever uncovered anywhere in the world, the Sutton Hoo treasure will surely reveal clues to its secrets as it continues to enthrall and capture the imagination of a once glorified civilization. If this really was the king of East Anglia, then where is he? No body has yet been found. Perhaps because the acidic soil long ago dissolved it, although scholars point out that human remains have been found elsewhere at the site. However, King Redwall's reign does coincide with the artifacts present here. We will leave it at that for the moment, guys. Truly a remarkable place and a stunning example of what is still to be found in the future. Just like the case with the Silver Pharaoh's tomb, the Sutton Hoo is unremarkable in its popularity, but absolutely extraordinary in the scale and preservation of what was found. The very fact this place is still being pieced together as to what it is and who it was for will keep our interest. We simply don't know, but it is going to be a lot of fun finding out. What do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. Sutton Hoo is a Royal Anglo-Saxon burial ground. It's a really special place. There are only three Anglo-Saxon ship burials that we know of in England, and two were found here at Sutton Hoo. In 1939, uh, the excavations took place, and this was on the brink of the Second World War. So this happened in a really concentrated period, lots of excitement, and this was probably one of the kind of greatest archaeological discoveries that changed history. This is thought to be a royal burial, possibly the burial of a king, and the objects really reflect uh, the wealth of that person. We know he was a warrior, he was well-traveled, well-connected, and each object placed in the grave tells a story.